Hello YouTube, welcome back to the conservatory. Now, in case you've been wondering why there haven't been any updates on the little 400 recently, it's because I sort of got a bit distracted. I bought myself a new bike. In fact, I'm really pleased. Um, despite messing around with motorbikes for 30 years, this is the first time I've ever bought a brand new motorbike. It's not actually a motorbike, it's a Chinese pit bike. And I bought it from a company called Pit Bike Direct and I thought it was a bit of a bargain really, it cost me £800, uh, but I can, had to do, spend a bit more money converting it to Supermoto trim. Now as the bike stand, or when the bike arrived, it came with off-road tyres, so it had a 17 inch front and a 14 inch rear, complete with off-road tyres. I've then got very lucky, I managed to pick up the wheels, the, uh, the catch tray and the handguard second hand for quite a good price. So um, I did save a bit of money there. Now you can buy these bikes already converted for about 1200 pounds. Unfortunately, by the time you actually, if you were to buy the wheels new, the hand guards, the crash bobbins, catch tray, um, and all the bits to convert it to Supermoto spec, even doing it yourself, you, you soon get up to sort of 1100 pounds anyway. So you're not really saving a lot of money. And as it turned out, and this was a real pain in the neck. I was going to film it all thinking, yeah, it'd be great, you know. We'll film the unboxing and we'll just bolt all the bits on, do a bit of a commentary for it, get that done in the weekend. Yeah, that was, that was two weeks ago. <coughs> um, just before the coronavirus struck, luckily, so I was able to get all the parts before that came in. So, why was it a problem? And, and what did I have to do? Well, the first thing is, fitting these little 12 inch wheels. They don't fit. Well, they sort of do, but they weren't quite the same as the wheels that came off it. So when I went to fit them, there was just a massive gap in the spindle. Uh, the spacers didn't line anything up and uh, took a lot of head scratching, quite a bit of measuring. Uh, and eventually I worked out that um, the bearings on these wheels are actually 10 millimetres closer together than the bearings on the original wheels. So the first job I had to do was machine up some new spacers for the spindles, both front and rear. The good news is, is once I'd worked out what length those, those spacers needed to be, um, it all bolted together quite nicely and even the, the front caliper and the front disc lined up back in their original position. I managed to get a good chain run that lined up properly as did the, the rear caliper and the wheels are, are centered within the forks and the swing arm. So yeah that, that took a couple of days of head scratching, measuring and, and making bits on the lathe, trial fitting stuff. Um, very frustrating but we got there in the end. The, the next thing that I had to do was, was fit the hand guards. So again they didn't line up handlebars on this are obviously slightly different to the, the handlebars that are normally fitted on the, the Supermoto conversions. Uh, so I had to, had to sort of tweak the, the hand guards, uh, put them in the vise, bend them around a little bit to get the right profile uh, and jig around with where the, the mounting points were going to fit. Got those on, machined up the bungs out of a bit of nylon. Uh, in the lathe, so luckily I got the lathe, so I was able to do that myself, so that saved me a bit of money. But again, there was a day just messing around, turning stuff down in the lathe. Um, so we've got the front end fitted, moving back, we have the, the catch tray. <clears throat> On a normal pit bike, the, the footrest actually bolt to the underside of the engine. So, so normally, you can just bolt the uh, catch tray straight, under, straight underneath the, the footrest mount. This particular bike actually has a cross member and the engine fits to the cross member on some spacers. So again, has to remove the spacers, fit the catch tray in and make up another spacer to compensate for the difference. That now fits. Even these little um, crash bungs on the, on the footrests, they were a pain. The footrests on this are a slightly different shape to the ones on most other bikes. So they actually taper in at the bottom. In order to get these to fit, I had to clearance a bit of the, the casting with a file. Did that, went to fit the, the footrest rubbers, and, uh, and then found out that the actual 
uprights that you screw into were too high, they needed trimming down. But eventually we got those on. Again, that was another, another couple of hours of messing around, figuring it out. And finally, the last thing is the, the catch bottle that's underneath here. You could use a Red Bull can or, or a Brasso can if you want to go old school. Um, I just happened to have some posh shaving foam that was nearly empty that came in an aluminium bottle and I decided to use that. Now, typically you would just actually cable tie it to the frame, all would be good. On this bike, did that and it rubbed against the shock. So I had to weld up a little bracket that bolted to the frame that just pulled the bottle out a bit. So, as I said, all in all, we got there. It took a lot longer than it should have done and it was a lot more hassle. But I'm really, really looking forward to, to riding this. Um, there's, there's various go-kart tracks around the country that do actually allow these pit bikes out, on, out to play, um, including one quite locally that started doing pit bike evening on a Tuesday. So uh, yeah, I'm really dying to, to get out on this and have a play with it. But like the rest of the UK, I've been put in, put in lockdown uh, thanks to the coronavirus or COVID-19. So yeah, so the bad news is I've got it all finished none of the go-kart tracks are open um, and, and honestly if you've never had a go on one of these they are great they really are good fun so I'm absolutely gagging to go out and play with my new toy but I can't the the good news however is that uh, like so many people I've been been put on this um, been told to stay at home and uh, been put on the furlough scheme so how long that's going to last i don't know but while i'm at home we're going to get on with the little 400 might as well make use of the time while i'm here so hopefully there'll be a few more updates coming on so let's move this out of the way and get cracking with the little 400 i'll be back in a minute right so i've moved pit bike out of the way and we've pulled the little cbr 400 out and i've put it up on the paddock stands and uh wilma's about to do a runner as well obviously doesn't want to on YouTube so um, whilst you've whilst you've been away I've taken the radiator off and all the coolant hoses and the thermostat housing uh, I've also disconnected and removed all the wiring loom we're, we're going to look at the wiring loom in a bit more detail in a, in a future video and talk about electrics but we're at that stage now where really the the only thing left to remove is is the suspension and, uh, and then obviously remove the frame from the engine. So I've been thinking about this. Obviously the bike's up on paddock stands at the moment, which is fine. I can take the wheels off. Um, but whilst the bike's on paddock stands, we can't actually remove the suspension because it is still in effect sitting on the suspension. So I had a bit of a thought about it. I have got an ABBA stand and that fixes through the, the swing arm pivot. So I could have put it on the ABBA stand, put a jack underneath the engine, um, we could have balanced it a bit. It's a little bit precarious. So I had a bit of a think about how we're going to raise the bike off the ground and still have access to the suspension. And whilst I was looking over the bike, I was looking at the sump. And here is an NC23 sump. Now the one thing you'll notice is that the, the base of the sump is actually fairly flat and it also sits fairly parallel to the ground. The only thing we've got to worry about are the protrusions for the, the drain plug, this little bracket here, and, and obviously this bit at the front. Also, the other nice thing about the, the NC23 sump is there's four bolt holes, one there, one there, and the same on the other side. Uh, and these actually are used to attach the fairing brackets to. So I figured it'd be quite handy if we could make something that the sump sits on. And I've come up with a very crude basic little platform so it's a couple of bits of plywood i've uh, cut out some holes to allow the assorted parts to sit through so the, the sump actually sits flat on there and then i've made up some little little brackets that are screwed to the plywood and we'll have some bolts go through into the sump itself now the bolts are really there just to stop the sump moving around. All the weight is being supported by the sump itself. So don't worry about the fact they're only small M6 bolts. They're not going to be taking any weight at all. They're just there to 
keep everything tight together. So the idea is we're going to bolt this up here to the underside of the engine using a couple of allen bolts and then the next thing I've locked up, very low tech, it's a box. Not just any old box though, it's a box on casters so that means we can still move the bike around once we've taken the wheels off it and that will slide underneath and then we'll screw the plate into the top of the box. So, let's go about and see if this works. I've got four Allen bolts. And just put the plate up into position. it in place. As ever, the last bolt is always a bit of a nuisance. Now I'm going to be honest, I haven't actually tried this out before filming it, so uh, this is either going to be a stroke of genius or a total disaster, but you'll get to see it either way. Okay, so that's the plate bolted on, and then we'll just put the little wooden box underneath and then once we've taken the wheels off I'm going to lower the bike down onto the uh, onto the box we might have to move it and jiggle it around a bit just to get the centre of balance but hopefully it'll work so let's start with taking the wheels off Now the one thing I haven't got is a 27mm socket in this, um, this kit, so I'm going to have to go in the garage and grab a 27mm socket um, so to the, the rear wheel. Uh, obviously if you just bought this kit to work on one of these yourself, it's something else you're going to have to buy I'm afraid. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll pop in the garage, go and get my 27mm my socket out and take the wheels off and uh, we'll come back to you in shortly. Right, back with the 27mm socket, so let's carry on with removing the wheels. Okay, so that's the rear wheel out. And the, the rear caliper mount.
Now we're going to move on to the front. So, loosen the front wheel spindle and then loosen the actual fork clamps. You don't need to take these pinch bolts all the way out, just loosen them off. And gradually undo the nut and just push the spindle through a bit until it works loose. And there's the front wheel the spacers so just put them on the spindle for safekeeping Now for, now for the moment of truth, I'm going to remove the, the paddock stands, but before I do that I've just got some blocks of wood that I'm going to sit underneath the front of the, the trolley just to stop things tilting over. Well, that's the front huh, on there. screws and we're just going to screw the plate into the actual box itself. Well I have to say I'm actually quite pleased with that. I wasn't sure whether it worked or not. to remove and that's this rear subframe now the subframe actually got quite bent during the crash so I do have another one from the donor bike which will be modifying same as this one, and we'll be putting that in its place. We're going to obviously put these, these bolts in a, in a bag and label them up for safekeeping. removed. Now I do have the replacement just out here. So as you can see got a fair bit of modification to do. Um, got to cut it down to suit. So 
basically everything from the seat mounting bracket backwards can be cut off. <coughs> We've got the, the rear footrest mounts, we don't need those anymore. There's a couple of sundry other little brackets we want to remove. And then this cross piece here, we need to cut that out and it does need re-welding back in here just to stop them spreading. So I'm going to head out in the garage, annoy the neighbours and fire up the angle grinder and I think we'll leave it there for today and um, I'll come back and uh, we'll, we'll start stripping the suspension. I think for the next video we're going to look at taking the forks off and, and rebuilding the forks. But for now, I think that's, that's us done. Like I said, so pleased with this little trolley. It's worked better than I expected. So, take care of yourselves, especially in these current times, and uh, look forward to seeing you all back soon.